There is a hidden heart disease risk factor that affects one in five people worldwide, yet most people have not heard of it. It's called lipoprotein A, or LP little a, and it's a genetic cholesterol particle that greatly increases the risk of heart disease and stroke. The challenge is that there is currently no proven ways to lower it, including lifestyle changes. But there are some treatments on the horizon that could change that. Hi, I'm Valerie, a lifestyle nurse dedicated to helping you live a longer, healthier life. In this video, I will be sharing some of the more recent advancements in lipoprotein A treatment that could make a big difference to those with an elevated lipoprotein A, like me and many others like me. I found out that I have an elevated lipoprotein A about two months ago. This prompted me to make an entire video on this subject. So if you want to learn more about lipoprotein A, please look for a link to that video in the description for this video. To briefly fill you in, lipoprotein A is a genetic cholesterol particle that runs in families and doesn't respond to the usual lifestyle changes like diet and exercise. It triples the risk of heart disease and stroke and also increases the risk of aortic valve problems. There are no known ways to lower lipoprotein A. Basically, as of right now, if you have an elevated lipoprotein A, you're stuck with it. The only way that it can be managed is by focusing on controlling other cardiovascular risk factors, like lowering LDL cholesterol, staying active, maintaining a, a healthy blood pressure, things like that. The goal being to lower overall cardiovascular risk. But after years of research, scientists are finally developing medications designed specifically to lower lipoprotein A. So now let's talk about some of these treatments that could transform how we manage lipoprotein A. After decades of limited options, this is very promising. First up, and I know I'm probably mispronouncing this, is pelicarsin. This one works by blocking the production of lipoprotein A in the liver. Early studies have shown that it can lower lipoprotein A levels by up to 80%, and it is now in a fully enrolled cardiovascular outcomes trial. Um, this means that they're trying to prove if a medication that lowers lipoprotein A actually reduces heart disease risk in the process. Next, we have two other medications, and again, don't quote my pronunciation of these, but olpercerin and lipodercerin. These work by silencing the genes that are responsible for producing lipoprotein A. These are both injectables and are showing that they can lower lipoprotein A by over 90%. And they are also pretty convenient even though they're injectables. Uh, they may only require a dose every six months or maybe even less frequently. For those who prefer a non-injectable option, there's also an oral medication called Muvaliplin. It's still early on in development, but so far it is showing that it has the potential to lower lipoprotein A levels by 65 to 80%. So this would be a daily pill. All these therapies are still in clinical trials, but the progress is promising. These advancements are so important because for decades, elevated lipoprotein A has been a frustrating puzzle in cardiovascular health. We've known that it significantly increases the risk of heart disease and stroke, but we have not been able to do anything about it. These medications could save lives and improve outcomes for millions of people. For those of us living with an elevated lipoprotein A, this progress offers real hope. So after many years of limited options, we're finally seeing some groundbreaking progress in uh, treatments designed to lower lipoprotein A. And the future is looking brighter for managing this challenging risk factor. If you currently do not know your lipoprotein A level, now is the time to talk to your doctor about testing, especially if heart disease runs in your family. Knowing your number can let you know that you need to keep your heart health on track and work on lowering other risk factors while we wait for better treatment options. And remember, if you want to know more about lipoprotein A um, and about my personal journey with lipoprotein A, I did a previous video on this. So please be sure to check out the link in the video description. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you're interested in lipoprotein A updates and learning more about how you can lower your heart disease risk and improve your overall health using lifestyle management strategies, subscribe to my Nurse Guided Wellness channel. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, please take good care of your heart 
and take good care of yourself.